Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to Drums and Drams. My name's Cameron, and today we've got a brand new performance video here on the channel. For those of you unfamiliar with this series, basically what I'm gonna be doing is first, I'm gonna review this brand new whiskey. This is the Old Grandad 16 year. It's a Kentucky straight bourbon whiskey, bottled at 100 proof and featuring that high rye mash bill that I think a lot of us love from the Old Grandad lineup coming from Jim Beam. And then after this review, I'm actually gonna perform something for you guys. So the reason we've called this a performance I know it's a cheesy title, is because it basically brings together the two things in the channel's name, which is drums and drams. So drams is kind of an obvious thing, right? I love whiskey, I love making these videos for all of you guys doing live streams. We've got a great Patreon community. We do all the barrel picks and all that stuff, but this is not my full-time job by any means. My actual day job is as a percussionist in an orchestra and also as a drummer. And so I like to feature that on the channel whenever I get the opportunity, which is why I came up with this performance series. So far, I've been able to play kind of a bluesy, jazzy vibraphone solo, and also a giant piece for percussion and electronics. And now we're gonna keep it, you know, we're, we're gonna make it a little more normal, let's say. And I'm just gonna do a, a straight up drum cover, playing drum set. And it's one of my favorite songs called Blood Meat by a band called Protest the Hero. It's a band that I've loved since my high school days. And the connection to this whiskey actually is the age statement. So this whiskey is 16 years old and the song that I'm gonna be playing for you guys was released 16 years ago. It's a little more of a technical metal song, so it might not be your cup of tea, but hopefully you would at least enjoy the drumming. And so we'll get to that at the end of the video, I promise. But first we have to review this whiskey and let me know along the way. If you like this idea of performances or if you think it's really stupid, let me know in the comments section, hit that like button and subscribe while you're at it. Now let's get onto the nose of this OGD 16 year and see what we get. All right, so let me start off by giving you guys a couple of broad descriptors for this whiskey before I dive more specifically into the individual notes that I'm picking up here on the nose. So a few words that come to mind right away would be gentle, delicate, soft, and I'm also gonna say sweet or maybe even candy sweet. So I'm mentioning all these words that people might then associate with this being kind of a flat whiskey on the nose. I don't I don't think this is a flat whiskey. I think some people are gonna automatically complain that it's 100 proof. I get it. Look, I would love if all of the Jim Beam limited releases like Knob 18, Knob Creek 12, like all of these bottlings, I'd love to see them at 120. And that would be a great world to live in, but that's not always the case. I think people will complain about that right away, but I don't think this is a flat whiskey on the nose. I think it's a nose that commands or not commands, it actually requires your attention. You need to sit with it probably in a quiet environment and spend time with it and dig into it and put in put in effort. It's not gonna come out of the glass and uh, and kind of do all the work for you is maybe one way I would put it. And then, you know, before I go back into the nose and dig in just a little bit deeper, I'm just gonna say that it smells freaking delicious. Candy sweetness, It's it smells like it's gonna taste really, really good. Doesn't smell particularly aged in the traditional um, Jim Beam way that you might expect, but I think that's kind of a cool, kind of a cool change up. So back to the nose now. All right, so let's dig a little deeper now into the nose and talk about some more specific qualities. The the top note and, and maybe the main note that I get out of this whiskey is a super sweet and inviting candied orange note. Very sweet, very rich, but this candy sweetness that I actually pick up on a lot of older MGP products especially old school, older MGP products. So you can see on the table, I've got Tumblin Dice 11, which I think is maybe like a 2019-ish type bottling. And we've got the Remus Volstead. Both of those are at 100 proof. The Volstead is 14 years old, bottled and bond. The Tumblin Dice is 11 years old at 100 proof. Both of these pretty much right around the same era of MGP, and both have these crazy candied citrus orange notes that just jump out of the glass. I've gotta say, this old granddad 16 year, actually smells more like these MGP products than it does any Jim Beam product that I'm familiar with. And I like that about it. I like that this is not a peanut bomb. If you guys are worried about that, you're not gonna get that here. If you're thinking about the standard 114 proof, which I've got on the table, this doesn't have that like heavy cinnamon, kind of mulchy brown sugar, uh, almost like brash profile. This is not that either. I mean, it really is this delicate mix of, of sweet vanilla notes candied orange notes. It's got this nice caramelized layer to it, but it's not a heavy, dense, rich caramel. It's this it's this sweet and airy kind of caramel note. Almost reminds me a little bit of like a Heaven Hill 18 or a William Heaven Hill 17 type caramel. And then at the very bottom of this whiskey, you pick up on some white pepper notes from that high rye and then also kind of this aged but soft and sweet oak component. So I think 
you know, for me, first impression of this whiskey, you gotta spend time with it. It smells really nice. And instead of continuing to nose this, I've gotta take a sip. So here we go, guys, cheers. So I am absolutely giddy about this whiskey on the palate. I, I know it's not the most intense whiskey out there, but I think the balance is spot on. It's it's not gonna be for everybody. And I wanna, I wanna say that here on the palate. I also think that's the case on the nose, kind of like what I said earlier about the proof. This is not gonna be for everybody. And it's because it doesn't rip your face off. It's not your standard Jim Beam profile. But I think the balance of this whiskey, considering the fact that it's a high rye mash bill, and considering that it's only bottled at 100 proof, I think the balance here is absolutely impeccable. Up front, you get all of that sweet candied orange. And as it starts to roll back in the mid palate, it's, it's this kind of like velvety blanket mouth coating experience on the tongue. It kind of fills up for me all, all parts of the palate. It doesn't lull. While it is soft, it doesn't lull. It's not flat by any means. And you get that kind of rush of what I was calling like that, that lighter, more airy caramel note um, in the middle of the palate. And as you get into the finish, I'm having an experience that I actually had on the Middle West uh, Vino de Naranja, the VDN finished whiskey that I reviewed from Middle West a few weeks back on the channel, which is that in the finish, I feel like I have a scoop of vanilla ice cream in my mouth. Like all this vanilla hits. And if you know me, you know, you know that vanilla is one of my favorite tasting notes. Super plain Jane, I get it, but I think it's just such a, a great aged whiskey note. And this has it in spades. On the, on the way, way back finish, you know, way after the fact, there's a note that I would not have expected to find on this whiskey, which is a, a Jim Beam aged leather note. Still no nuttiness hanging out, but aged leather on the back end. I Look, I think this is a, a really nice whiskey. The only consideration for this one is gonna be the price point. And I do have to very quickly say, I'm not entirely sure about the price point for this OGD 16. I haven't found an official press release as of the time that I'm recording this video. I've heard 150, I've heard 200, I've heard folks at the distillery paying 212 out the door or something like that. So for our purposes, let's say it's 150 to 200. It does feel a little overpriced. And that's just the harsh reality of the situation. At 150, I feel pretty good about this. As long as you know you're not gonna get something that's gonna rip your face off and it's not gonna resemble any old granddad you've ever had, including this 1989 Dusty. It's not, it's not close to these things. It's a totally different flavor experience. At 150, I feel okay. At 200, I'm like, this is a little much. Unless you try it, you love it, and then you pick it up at that price point, I would totally understand it. And, and at secondary, which is like 250 to 350, you, you know, it's not gonna be worth that, I would say. For me, as somebody that has kind of a, an affinity for old granddad, particularly because of these Dusties, this is a must-have bottle for me. And so I did pay over for this, and I'm not upset about it. I think it's really nice stuff. But we've got to do one more sip of this before we get onto the drumming portion of this video. So here we go, guys. Cheers. Wow. So the second sip actually smooths out quite a bit. There's not as much upfront punch. The development happens a little bit, a little bit more slowly, I would say. But even with that said, which, you know, you, you always acclimate to whiskeys when you drink them over and over and you have more, you know, more sips. Even with that said, even though this does kind of uh, level out a little bit, the, the thing that actually ramps up for me is the dessert and, and, and sweet qualities of the whiskey. If you guys have ever had anything that's like Sauterne finished, whether that's a Scotch, whether that's an American whiskey, Sauterne is a dessert wine, right? And you get all of these kind of these, these almost like white grape, you know, white grape peach, very heavy, intense, um, syrupy, you know, lighter fruit notes. You get these apple notes and these peach notes and these white grape notes. This has kind of that dessert wine feel to it on a second sip where it feels more relaxed and a little bit more mouth coating in, in some ways, but less spicy. So look, I'm going to I'm going to stick with my assessment of this whiskey. I think it's really great. 150 is a total buy. 200 maybe is a try before you buy. Above 200 is you better be kind of a collector or somebody that knows that they want this bottle in their collection. But I think I think that's my final assessment. And Look, I think a lot of folks are gonna complain about this. I've already heard some negative uh, reviews kind of bouncing around on the internet. I might be the odd one out on this. I don't know if that's gonna be the case, but I've gotta say, I really like this Old Granddad 16. So now it's time to move on to some drumming. <laughs> and look, the pairing of this whiskey with the drumming that you're about to see is gonna be a little bit different because the drumming is not a dessert wine. <laughs> it's not uh, relaxed and gentle. It's very much like uh, kind of technical metal. Let's Let's call it that. So here we go, guys. Let me know what you think at the end of this video in the comments section. Here is Blood Meat by Protest the Hero. Cheers, and I'll see you guys soon here on Drums and Drams. <laughs> 